Okay, so in this problem we're told a bungee jumper with mass 65 kilograms jumps from a high bridge. After reaching his lowest point, he oscillates up and down, hitting a low point 8 more times in 43 seconds. He finally comes to rest 25 meters below the level of the bridge. Estimate the spring stiffness constant and the unstretched length of the bungee cord, assuming a simple harmonic motion. So the first thing you should always do in a physics problem is draw what's going on. So we want to imagine our bungee jumper was up here, and he's going to jump down, right? And he's at some point, right, he's going to go up, and down, and oscillate. And we know he oscillates basically eight, or they say he oscillates, yeah, about eight times in 43 seconds. And then after he's done oscillating, he's going to come to rest, and we know that's 25 meters uh, below the level of the bridge. So this would be our bridge here. And so what we're trying to find is two things. One is the spring stiffness constant k, so we'll say k equals question mark, and then the unstretched length of the bungee cord. So basically it's going to be some shorter length than where he lands, because obviously it's going to be stretched out. So we want to find this length here. So those are the two things we're going to find. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the first thing we need to do to solve this problem. So the first thing that we need to do is find the period. So uh, we know that the period right, is the amount of time one oscillation takes, okay? So we know that the time, right, he's going to go uh, for 43 seconds, basically up and down, okay? And we know he completes one oscillation, or he completes eight total oscillations, okay? So eight oscillations, uh, I think it's spelled like this. So eight oscillations, right? So 43 seconds is eight oscillations. So if we wanted to figure out the time per oscillation, you would just divide 43 by eight. So when you do this, you'll get 5.375. The units of uh, the period is seconds. And hopefully this makes sense, right? Because we know he's hitting the bottom eight or eight separate times. That's what they say. Let me read it again. Hitting a low point eight more times in 43 seconds. So we know every time he's gonna basically hit a low point, He's going to go through another oscillation, hit the low point, another oscillation, hit the low point. So they basically, when they say that, they go th he goes through eight oscillations. That's what they're trying to tell you. And the total time it takes, uh, if we divide that by the number of oscillations, that'll give us the time per oscillation, which is our period. So we have T, uh, but how do we solve for K? So the way we solve for this is by using this formula for simple harmonic motion. The period is equal to 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the square root of the mass divided by the spring stiffness constant k. And so we just solve for the period, right? So we have t. We know the mass of our jumper is equal to 65 kg, meaning all we got to do is manipulate this equation in order to solve for k, right? Because all the other variables we know. So let's go ahead and do that. So starting off, we would divide by 2 pi. And then that would give us t divided by 2 pi is equal to the square root of mass divided by the spring stiffness constant. To get rid of the square root, you would square both sides. Right, that would cancel this, giving us the square root of t over 2 pi squared is equal to m over k. To solve for k, you would multiply both sides by k, giving us k multiplied by t over 2 pi, this whole thing is squared, equals m. Then you would divide by this term here to get k by itself, giving us k equals m over 2, or t over 2 pi, and that whole thing is squared. So now let's go ahead and plug it in. The mass of our bungee jumper is 65, divided by the period, which is 5.375, dividing by 2 pi there, and squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So 5.375 divided by 2 times pi. I'm going to square that value. And now I'm dividing 65 by that value. That'll give us a value of 88.82. Uh, we'll say 821. The units of the spring constant are newton meters, or newton per meter. So now we have the spring constant k. That was one of the things they're looking for. Uh, right, because they say estimate the spring stiffness constant. So that's right here. So 
your answer to one of the parts is right there. Next, what we want to do is find the unstretched length of the chord. And the way we're going to do this is essentially first by finding the distance that it is stretched. So we're going to find the change in, uh, we could call it X. So the change in X here that it stretches as a result of the mass of the person jumping down, uh, right, due to the force of gravity. If we can find that and subtract it from 25, or we take 25 and minus that, that'll give us the distance of the unstretched, right? Because we have basically how far down he is minus how much it's stretched will give us the unstretched length L. So the way we're going to do that is by using the formula for Hooke's law, right? F equals KX. So you want to draw the free body diagram here. So we know we're going to have a force MG pulling down uh, on our person here when they jump, uh, the force due to gravity. And then Hooke's law, since this is a spring here, right? Or we, we kind of imagine it as a spring, even though it's a bungee cord, it acts just like it. Uh, this is going to be uh, the force right, Hooke's law, right, so the force due to Hooke's law, which acts upwards. And so we know at the 25 meter mark, he's not moving anymore. So basically, K, or the sum of the forces at that point equals zero, because he's not moving. And then zero equals, and what we want to do is sum up the forces in this direction. So we have F, which is the force uh, of the spring, like due to the spring, minus mg, right? F is upward, so I call it positive. Uh, mg, force due to gravity is downward, so it's negative. So this tells us F is equal to mg, right? But as we said before, the Hooke's law tells us it's k delta x. So we know k delta x uh, is just equal to mg. Uh, and then we can divide both sides by k to get delta x there. Uh, and then delta x is how much we stretch, right? Which is what I said before. And then we'll just subtract 25 minus that to get L. So getting delta x, our mass of our person was 65 times g, the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant, 9.8, divided by k, the spring stiffness constant, which we just solved for. So 88.821. So we have 65 times 9.8 divided by 88.821. That's going to give delta x a value of 7.17. So 7.172. Uh, it's in meters, obviously since we have Newton meters on the bottom here, because you can see it's Newtons over Newton meters. So copy dot flip gives you uh, this, and then it cancels. So that's how we get the meters. Uh, and now we have the delta x. So we want to do 25 minus that. That'll give us the unstretched length. So 25 minus 7.172. Let's see what that gives us. That'll give us an unstretched length value, L, we'll call it, of 17. Point eight, uh, three, or it's eight two eight, but I'm gonna round to three. Uh, you can round however you want, though. You can say seventeen point eight or whatever you'd like to do. I guess actually we can just leave it to three. So seventeen point eight two eight. Keep in mind I did round a bit here with this value, so you might get a little different. So let's actually just say seventeen point eight. So L, the unstretched length, unstretched length is seventeen point eight meters. And yeah, so this will be your answer for the second part. Your first part, you can round to 88.8 .8, however you'd like. Uh, so yeah, 88.8 .8 newtons per meter, and then 17.8 meters. Those are going to be your answers here. Um, just a quick rundown of what we did. First, we found the period by uh, knowing the total time by the number of oscillations. Gives us the amount of time per oscillation. Then we just used the period formula for simple harmonic motion. Uh, solved it for k. Uh, and then just plugged in our values, right? Because we knew the period now, so we could solve. Here, we used the idea that after some distance, it'll come to rest using Hooke's law and a free body diagram. We knew that they were equal to each other, uh, the force due to gravity and the force of the spring. Uh, therefore, we could just solve for delta x, which was this, how much we stretched. Uh, and then we knew 25 meters is how far down he was. If we subtract the stretched length, that'll give us the unstretched. So that's how we got 17.8. And yeah, so these are going to be your two answers here. And uh, hopefully you found this video useful.